We've talked a lot about QYLD in the past and I think a lot of people still misunderstand what QYLD actually is. In this video today, we're gonna to talk about exactly what it is and what you need to know specific to how they make money and pass it on to you. So let's start right over here and get right to the point. And the point is, this is based on high income potential. As it says right here on the website, QYLD seeks to provide high income through covered call options writing strategies. And in fact, as a result of what they've been doing, they've been distributing monthly for the last nine years. Now let's start right there, and then we're gonna go into how they actually make money on covered call options. When it comes down to distributions, a lot of people say, oh, the dividends on QYLD is this. But hold on, it's not actually dividends. They are providing distributions. And yes, there's actually a difference between those two. Dividends are actually profits from an individual public company that are passed on to their investors in the form of a dividend of that profit. See, QYLD doesn't actually make profit. It's not a company. What it does is an options trading strategy. And because of that, it's actually called a distribution. But let's talk first about how do they actually make this money doing these options trades, and then what happens if they don't make the money? How do they maintain the ability to actually pass on these monthly distributions every single month for the last nine years? And by the way, we're talking about a 13% yield. That's pretty darn sexy. In fact, if you think about it, the last announced dividend was 17 cents per share. So if you own multiple hundreds of shares, you're making some good money every single month on that 17 per share payout. But we gotta be careful because the performance might not all be there. We'll look at that a little bit later. So let's talk about this covered call writing strategy. I'm gonna pull up my uh, Robinhood account just because it's a little bit easier to look at it this way. Now, what they focus on with QYLD is writing covered calls against the NASDAQ 100 index. Now, what the NASDAQ 100 is, is the top 100 companies listed in the NASDAQ that are both national and international companies. These are high growth companies and that's ultimately what they're writing against but it's not aimed on growth. But let's take a random stock in the NASDAQ 100. Oh, let's pick our favorite, Tesla, right? Into my Robinhood account, and I'm gonna type in Tesla. And right here we are. Now, of course, doesn't matter what the price of Tesla is. What matters right now is let's say we own a minimum of 100 shares of Tesla. When you earn a minimum of 100 shares of any company, any stock, you can write a covered call option. So let me show you an example to break this down because I think it's important if you're gonna be an investor of QYLD to understand at least the basics of what they're doing. Now we're talking about they do things on a big, big scale. They're doing things with the NASDAQ 100 index. What we're doing here is a very small, easy example. But I'm gonna come down here to Tesla, hit trade and then hit trade options. Now, what I'm gonna focus on is I'm gonna focus on selling a call. Again, selling a covered call. I already own 100 shares or more. Maybe I own 200 shares, 300 shares, 400 shares, doesn't matter. I own a minimum of 100, so it allows me to sell that covered call. So let's say you and I, we got a deal. I own 100 shares of Tesla. You like that idea and you wanna buy my 100 shares of Tesla. But right now, the market's kinda lame. You only want Tesla if it starts going to the moon. So let's say, for example, the price right now of Tesla is going for $200 a share. You only wanna get it if it hits $210 a share or more. And the reason you don't really wanna buy it now and just wait is you don't really care. You don't wanna invest the money, who cares? You only are interested in buying it if it starts bottle rocketing to the top. Well, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna say by, let's say April 6th, if it hits $210 or more, you're gonna take my 100 shares. But as a result, you're gonna give me $13.85 per share. That means $13.85 times 100 shares. Let's take a look. If I click on this and I do one contract, look how much money I'm making, 1,385. Now your goal is, because you're putting all this money, is to take advantage of this and let's say it does hit 210 or more. You want that to happen. So you have the option not the obligation. You could always just say, nah, never mind, I don't want it. But you have the option to take my 100 shares from me. Me, on the other hand, I don't want you to get this strike price. What I would love is for it to stay under $210. I would love April 6th to come and go, and the thing is only $208. Even better, $209.95, because it's not at least $210. Which means, 
I get to keep your $1,385 as pure profit. Hello, that is amazing. And that's the goal with QILD. What they want is they don't want the strike price to be hit. They want that to go ahead and not be hit at all. So that way they collect this premium right here and they pass it along to you in the form of a distribution monthly. Sounds pretty sexy, right? Like that sounds pretty cool. That's the point of covered call writing. That's the point of why people would be interested in buying a call and how that whole transaction works in the most basic, basic form. What, if, what happens if the market's going crazy and you don't have that opportunity to make a lot of money? Well, then you're kind of stuck and you don't make that premium. So that second question would be, hey, QYLD, how are you actually making money to pass along for the last nine years a fairly consistent dividend to provide a 13% yield? How does that work? That's where the covered call writing strategies and all that kind of stuff and all this high income, it kind of goes absolutely to hell. What happens is they do something called return on capital. This is very important to know. It's important to know because of not only how it works, but also tax implications. Right over here on their website, which I'll include down below in the description so you can check it out for yourself, they have the Form 19A that they publish every month. This lets you know how much money they made as a result of that covered call writing strategy and how much they didn't make and what they're doing on the return of capital. Let me explain. In this particular example, we can see that their net investment income for this particular month was a whopping expensive one penny. So that means they're distributing one penny per share that you own as a result of their net investment income. And then you can see how much year to date they've paid, which of course we're still early into this year, so it's only two cents, and uh, the percentage. But then let's have a look at return of capital. See that? 15 cents. That's where all the money's coming from. So here's the thing with return on capital. If you have QYLD and a tax advantaged account, you don't really have to care about this. But if you hold QYLD in a brokerage account that you pay taxes on every year, that you're going to get a 1099 DIV, 1099B, anything like that, that you got to file with taxes, this is important to know. Let's start with the net investment income. They tax based on their options writing strategies, 60% long term. 40% short-term capital gains. This is important for people that have very unique tax situations. You make a lot of money or you don't make a lot of money. There's a lot of different things. You gotta consult with your tax professional to see if this would impact you or not. Because if they're making a lot of money and everything's going great, all this premium is coming in from their covered call writing strategy. Now you gotta understand, is that gonna impact me 60, 40, right? Very, very important. But then there's also the other side of it. And that is the return on capital. Let's say for example, you buy right now QILD. Let me pull up the exact price. As of the recording of this video, it's going for $16.29. So you buy your shares at $16.29. When they do return on capital, how they do that is by returning the money that you invested back to you. That's how they make up that extra money to maintain that 13% dividend yield, to maintain their nine years of consistent monthly distributions. It is what it is. The best part about it is though, especially in the case of the example we just looked at over here, that 15 cents, that actually isn't taxed at all. Doesn't matter. That isn't taxed. Return on capital is never taxed. What's taxed is that net investment income that I just mentioned. But here's the tricky part. With return on capital, you're 16, you know, what did I say, 1679? It does go down. Your average price paid goes down when they return the capital to you. So if you're making a lot of money back, a lot of money back, and they keep giving back your own money to you, that reduces your average cost. Now, I think it's gonna take a very long time to a point where you would have like a $0 average cost, but you gotta remember that and you gotta keep this in mind. Best way to look at it is go over to your brokerage and look at your average cost. And the trick with the taxes are then when you decide to sell. QYLD. This is going to be something that you got to keep in mind. Because they're doing the return on capital, you get to keep the amount of shares that you originally bought, but because your average price is going down, when you go to sell it, that could potentially be a capital gain. So you bought it at $16. Let's say you've held on to it for a long enough period of time that your average cost is now $15 per share. Well, now you got to keep in mind that you now have a $1 per share long term or short term capital gain. And that's what you would have to report on your taxes. That's when return on capital comes to haunt you 
for the tax man. The last thing that people don't quite understand with QILD is the price versus total return. Let's hop over to Seeking Alpha and take a proper look. Right here we are and we're looking at price return. Now if I hop over here to one year, this looks pretty bad, right? You immediately see an 18% dip over the last year. And a lot of people were frustrated with QILD. I'm selling it, this is dumb. Remember the goal, high income producing activity, monthly distributions. It's not about growth. So you don't wanna look at it from this perspective. You don't wanna look at it from price return. You wanna flip that switch a little bit. Take it to total return. The difference between price return and total return is that's gonna factor in all of those monthly distributions. Let's see how it looks in this case. You go from, remember this number, down 18.35% to only down now 7.83%. Now 2022 was a bear market. 2022, the entire market was down. So that's natural that it's responding to that. So when we compare total return to the stock market at 7.83% down on QILD, you can see the total return not as bad as a result of last year's bear market. Here's the S&P 500. You can see that is down 6.71 against the 7.83%. So again, not as bad. But there's other things that we really should look at holistically about QILD. And it may make you question, is it time to sell QILD? Well, in that case, check out this video next. We'll see you on the next video.